Welcome to the lecture series of electrical machines and we are discussing the magnetic circuit. The next topic that we are going to discuss the magnetic circuit and its analysis. So we have seen that magnetic lines of force and the magnetic circuit is basically a closed path that is followed by magnetic flux. So any closed path that is followed by magnetic flux is called magnetic circuit and it usually consists of magnetic material which has high permeability. So high permeability materials are iron, soft steel etc. So any closed path followed by the magnetic flux is called magnetic circuit and magnetic circuit will have a high permeability. So magnetic flux starts from a point and finishes at the same point after completing its path. So if you see one circuit which is a magnetic circuit, here you can see that magnetic flux which is originating at a point is finishing at the same point after completing its path. L is the length which is the average length of the magnetic circuit. A is the area of the cross section. Now if a coil which is having an n turns and carrying a current I is used to excite this magnetic material then a flux will be establishing in the magnetic material. The magnetic material that we have taken is having an iron core with a relative permeability mu r. So we will see some of the terms and the derivation. So flux density B, so the notation B we use always for the flux density is basically flux per unit area. So flux notation we will use by phi and A is the area of the cross section. The unit of flux density is Weber per meter square. Then we will compute the magnetizing force which is noted by H. So it is equal to the magnetic flux density divided by mu naught into mu r whereas mu naught is basically the permeability of free space and mu r is the relative permeability of the medium. So if you substitute the value of the flux density B from the first equation so it is will give you phi by a mu naught into mu r. The value of mu naught that is permeability of free space is constant. It is equal to 8.854 into 10 to the power minus 12 the unit is farad per meter. So the unit of magnetizing force is ampere turn per meter. We know that HL that is magnetizing force multiplied with the length of the magnetic circuit is equal to number of turns into the current I. So this is the MMF that is the magnetomotive force. So if we substitute the value of H that is the magnetizing force that we have got here that is phi by A into mu naught mu r multiplied with the length is equal to Ni and then we try to find out what is the flux then flux is equal to Ni by L by A mu naught mu r. So Ni is basically the MMF and the denominator of this fraction is basically the reluctance that we are going to see. So the formula that we have derived the flux is basically MMF by reluctance S. S is equal to L by A mu naught mu r. Now let us see the conclusion of this particular equation that is the amount of flux set up in the core. First conclusion is that the flux is proportional to the value of n and i that is its product that is the magnetomotive force. So flux will increase if either of the two increase and vice versa. So if you increase the number of turns or the current excitation current then the flux will increase and vice versa. If you decrease then the flux will decrease. It is inversely proportional to L by A mu naught mu r which is called the reluctance of the magnetic circuit that is the net opposition to the flow of the flux. 
So reluctance is basically the opposition that is offered to flux by the magnetic path, similarly to resistance in the electrical circuit. So lower reluctance, higher will be the flux and vice versa. Since flux is inversely proportional to reluctance, so if your reluctance is lower, obviously the flux will be higher and that is good for any magnetic circuit. So this formula flux is equal to MMF by reluctance where MMF is equal to the product of the number of turns and current and reluctance is basically the L by A mu naught mu R is the property of the material dimensions. Okay, so this equation will have a strong resemblance to the equation I is equal to EMF by resistance which we use for the Ohm's law. So this equation is basically known as Ohm's law for electric current. The, this equation is for the magnetic circuit. So it is strong resemblance to Ohm's law for electric current. So it can be said as Ohm's law for the magnetic circuit. So it can be referred as Ohm's law for magnetic circuit. Now we will see some of the important terms that will appear again and again in magnetism. First, what is a magnetic field? So it is a region around a magnet where its poles exhibit a force of attraction or repulsion that we have already seen. And magnetic flux will be always noted by phi. This is the amount of magnetic lines of force set up in a magnetic circuit. So wherever there is a magnetic circuit, magnetic lines of force will exhibit and the amount is uh, measured in terms of the flux. The unit of flux is Weber and it is analogous to electric current in the circuit. So the same what the current is doing for the electric circuit, the same thing the flux will be do for the magnetic circuit. Next term that we are going to see is magnetic flux density. It is noted by B and it is a point in which the flux per unit area. Since it is a density, Density is equal to mass per unit volume or area, so it is flux per unit area. So the magnetic flux density B will be given by flux per unit area and unit is Weber per meter square. You can see the unit Weber for flux and unit Weber per meter square for flux density. You have to note that one Tesla is equal to one Weber per meter square. The other unit of flux density is Tesla. So we say that one Tesla is equal to one Weber per meter square. The other term that we will see is the permeability. Permeability is the ability of a material to conduct magnetic lines of force through it. So if the permeability is greater for a material, it it's greater its conductivity for the magnetic lines of force and vice versa. So it is always good if you have a material with very very high permeability. The least permeability or the poorest permeability will be for the air or the vacuum and it is given by mu naught which is having a value of 4 pi into 10 to the power minus 7 and the unit is Henry per meter. All the other materials will be measured in terms of the reference of air and that is known as relative permeability. It is the absolute or actual permeability of a magnetic material which is much greater than mu naught. So if you take any material, its actual value will be much greater than the value of the air or vacuum and that is taken as the reference of the measurement so relative permeability will give you the absolute value. Now we can see that mu is equal to mu naught into mu r where mu naught is the permeability of free space and mu r is the relative permeability of the medium that will be given to you in the data set. So mu r that is the relative permeability is equal to mu by mu naught. Obviously if you try to determine the relative permeability of air, it will be equal to 1 because it will be equal to mu naught by mu naught. So both will cancel each other and it will be equal to 1. For all non-magnetic material, it is also 1. 
So any non-magnetic material, the relative permeability is 1. So the relative permeability can be as high as 8000 for soft iron, whereas if you take any alloy of iron 22% and nickel 78%, which is known as metal, is as high as 120,000. So you can see that the value of relative permeability is very, very high. The conducting of the magnetic uh, flux in a material will be very good. Next term that we will see is magnetic field intensity. The notation is H, magnetic field intensity. So magnetic field intensity is basically the force acting on a unit north pole of one Weber when placed at a point in the magnetic field. In mathematical point of view, H, that is the magnetic field intensity, is equal to MMF, that is equal to Ni, divided by the length of the magnetic path, that is L. And unit is ampere term per meter. Next term, magnetomotive force. The magnetic pressure which sets up or tends to sets up a magnetic flux in a magnetic circuit is known as the magnetomotive force. It is analogous to EMF, that is the electromotive force in the electric circuit. As per work law, it can be defined as the work done in moving a unit magnetic pole of one waiver once around the magnetic circuit. So MMF is equal to Ni, which is unit is given in ampere turns. And it is analogous to EMF in an electric circuit. The next term that we are going to see is the reluctance. The opposition offered to the magnetic flux by the magnetic circuit reluctance is equal to L by A mu naught into mu R which we have already derived and it is analogous to resistance in an electric circuit. Other term that we will see is permeans. It is a measure of the ease with which the flux can be set up in the material. So basically permeans is the reciprocal of reluctance. So if you take the re reciprocal of reluctance, you will get permeance. So it is equal to A mu naught mu R by L, Weber turn per ampere turn or Henry. It is analogous to conductance in an electric circuit. So if you see resistance, analogous is reluctance, conductance analogous is permeance. The last term that we are going to see in the important terms is relativity. So it is a specific reluctance and analogous to resistivity in an electric circuit. So the way the resistivity is defined for an electric circuit, the same way the relativity is defined for any magnetic circuit. So we have seen some of the important terms in the magnetic circuit and what their uh, phenomena and fundamentals are and we will see you in the next class. Thank you.